All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Remy, and I'm a product marketing manager at Cloudflare focused on all things developer and serverless related. And today's talk on that topic is going to be about migrating to the cloud using serverless and, of course, what you as an enterprise need to know. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare protects and accelerates any website, application, or API through our global cloud network of 155 data centers. We use our network to provide services like caching, DDoS mitigation, web application firewall, serverless computing, video delivery, and much more for cloud, on-prem, and hybrid deployments. So today, we're going to talk about migrating to the cloud. And what I want you to take away from today's talk is that migrating is something that shouldn't be painful. It doesn't need a complex two, five, or 10-year plan. You don't need to have a huge lift and shift to kind of get things going. But most importantly, I want you to take away how a, the right application of serverless technology can actually let you migrate bits and pieces of your application and data to take advantage of the speed, flexibility, and cost benefits of the cloud. But before we get there, you heard me mention the term serverless, and you see it here on the title. And some of you might be thinking, so what is exactly does he mean by serverless? Well, you might have heard some jokes about serverless, or maybe even seen some funny photos online, right? Here's our serverless deployment. It's, a, it's huge. You know, we have lots of, lots of serverless servers. But to get at the heart of what serverless can actually do for us when it comes to computing and cloud migration, I'm going to take us back in time just a little bit to bring everybody up to speed on just exactly how serverless compute even came to be, how we got where we are. And when we think about compute, it all started with what we'll call generation one, which is one big metal box and one lonely application on that metal box that could take months to deploy, right? Ordering a server and having it delivered is not exactly fast. And then it moved on to generation two, where that lonely application, well, thanks to virtualization, it got some friends. And it reduced deployment time down to weeks or days. But these applications, they were all still tied to one big metal box. Then something big happened with generation three. Some of those applications from generation two and generation one got to exchange their steel and silicone cages for a nice fluffy cloud and deploy times that were measured in hours or minutes rather than days or months or weeks. And the thing is, not all of these applications, though, they weren't all so fortunate to be able to get to migrate to the cloud, either due to complexity, regulations, size, or some other complication. They weren't, be able, they weren't able to be lifted and shifted as a whole, and so they remain stuck back in generation two or generation one. And this is really where what we're going to talk about today, and this is where the next generation of computing comes into play, and that is serverless computing. And unfortunately, that is not quite as dark as it should be, but uh, that's a map, and that's a map of the world. And serverless computing, what it really is, is it's just a fully managed compute environment where you don't have to worry about configuring or running a server, VM or container. And at Cloudflare, we actually took the concept of serverless computing and we distributed it out to the entire network using Cloudflare workers. And so what are Cloudflare workers? Well, Cloudflare workers are extremely lightweight execution environments, which we're calling isolates. They can spin up in single digit milliseconds in response to events like web requests and disappear just as quickly. And since they're so lightweight, we can actually run them at all of Cloudflare's 155 data centers around the world to handle billions of requests or billions of events every single day. And before we get to some of how our existing customers have used Cloudflare to migrate away from legacy solutions to Cloudflare and AWS, as well as some code samples on things that you can do as well, let me take a brief moment to educate everybody just a little bit more on what exactly Cloudflare does. As I mentioned before, Cloudflare protects and accelerates any online application with a global network of 155 locations. Using a modern reverse proxy architecture that is scalable, integrated, and configurable, we can seamlessly integrate all performance features like caching or intelligent network routing, as well as security features like DDoS mitigation or a web application firewall with a serverless runtime. And Cloudflare supports changes to any of these services including the entire redeployment of serverless applications in under 30 seconds globally. Now, with, this, with these performance and security and serverless benefits, we've actually been able to help over 
uh, 10 million domains from companies large and small in all different industries, uh, improve the performance and security of their applications. And with these 155 locations, changes deploying in under 30 seconds, and code running only when you need it, what does it mean for you actually to run serverless? Right? So what does it mean to actually run serverless for you as somebody who's out there doing it in the field? Well, it means three things. The first, you can move fast. Updates are a matter of seconds. So developing and testing as you begin to move new functionality to the cloud is easier than ever. The next thing is that your users, they will notice. They, they actually, they, they will notice. Is AWS and Cloudflare scale as your, you know, as your user base and de user demand grow. And with 155 locations supporting you, it's close and fast. Your application becomes close and fast for all of your users, no matter where they are around the globe. And the last thing here is, of course, your wallet will thank you. You, know, you only are paying for the space you need, the time your code is running, and the request you actually want to handle, which means there's no need to over-provision or kind of predict what you, you know, your demand is going to be and end up paying for things that you don't want to. So how about somebody who's used Cloudflare workers, uh, who's used Cloudflare workers to actually do, to improve performance, security, and actually make their cloud migration? And that's where AO.com comes in. So for those of you who aren't familiar, AO.com is the largest online-only retailer of electronic goods in the United Kingdom. And AO.com came to Cloudflare wanting to migrate away from their legacy image management solution to a modern cloud storage provider. Unfortunately, their legacy solution, well, it's like a lot of legacy solutions. It used a non-standard method of naming and categorization the images, uh, naming and categorizing the images, which actually made it incompatible with S3. However, they were actually able to use Cloudflare workers to rename and cache the images on the fly in Cloudflare locations in the UK as well as across Europe, right as users requested them. And this really, it eliminated the risk and complexity of bulk renaming images, changing underlying application code, as well as the risk of kind of having to do a hard switch from one provider to the next. They had Cloudflare in the middle helping them out. So that's how AO.com did things. And you know, that's one customer example. But how about some quick examples, a little bit of code, show you a little bit of things that we can do to help you benefit as well. So before we get started, Let's take a little peek at what a default Cloudflare worker looks like and what we're actually going to be talking about for the rest of the talk. So workers, they come in two parts. The first part up here is not, it's not exactly important for the rest of this, but the, the only thing that's really important is to note is that it takes the requests as they come in and passes them down to this function down here, the handle request function, which is actually where all of our magic is going to be today, and this is where we'll be doing most of our, most of our stuff. So right now, in this worker, so it's just a very, very basic worker. It's actually just taking in a request, passing it on to where you requested what you were requesting, uh, taking that back and returning it to the user with doing a little logging in between. So that's not exactly exciting. But let's move on to something that is. So well, first, let's talk about actually rewriting old assets or rewriting URLs on the fly to serve assets in an intelligent way. So let's say you're like AO.com and you have a catalog of a few hundred thousand images, maybe a million images or a few million images uh, for your site or your application. And you're currently managing images in a directory structure, something like, something like the images, asset name, locale, device. And your company's been around for a while, so you have specific images for things like a Raspberry phone or maybe that version of your application that was supposed to run on a game console at one point or IE7. And you know, you're here at reInvent, so you've probably decided you'd like to at least move to S3 for better redundancy and speed. But you don't really want to migrate all of those unused images, especially if you don't have to. You don't necessarily have to pay for that. However, they do still occasionally get traffic from certain regions or from that person that just won't give up IE7. Uh, and so you're not quite ready to abandon them entirely, but you need, some, you need to do something about it. Well, what you can do in this instance is you can actually port over the main images that you want to keep going forward and write intelligent routing in Cloudflare workers that either rewrites based on path or user agent, or locale, or any combination of that and any other part of the request. 
and combine those. So you can keep serving images, but you can actually use smarter defaults for unsupported devices or locales. And you can also, at the same time, benefit from Cloudflare's global caching. And so let's take a peek at what that actually looks like in code. So first thing you can see up here is up top, this is actually going to happen outside of the handler function that I mentioned. And this is so what we do temporarily stays around between requests. And so what we're doing here is we're actually starting to add different routes. So you can see here I have a, a new map, in my, a JavaScript map, and I'm starting to set image, uh, I'm starting to set different URLs for different images that we might have. And you could go on and create another list or create your list of everything that you need. And then stepping down here inside the handler function, we're actually able to, when a request comes in, we're able to extract the path, the URL, and then we can, and then we can check, it, check it against the image map up above. And if we do actually see a, we do actually see some match, and mind you, this can also be done, this doesn't have to be done in a map, but it could be done in a regular expression as well. You don't have to just use URL, you could use user agent or anything like that. Uh, but when it comes to using regular expressions, we have a lot of people that like to do it this way, because using regular expressions, if you've ever played around with them, they're sort of a dark art more than anything else. And so the, the thing to note is that now after we've, you know, we've matched against this path, we end up here in this fetch request down here, is we're actually making the fetch request here to the Amazon S3 bucket, your new Amazon S3 bucket. And the cool thing is, is that the user will actually not ever see any of this. So you can make the change on the back end, and they actually won't be, there will be no, there's gonna be no redirects, no latency inducing redirects, nothing of that, nothing of that sort. It all looks the same to your user. There's no, there's no differences, and so, Everything will actually still be cached on Cloudflare, so as they make the request, uh, without having to have any round trip, and will be cached there for the next response to be nice and quick. So, now when you saw that previous example that we had, I had I had the kind of the map with all of the URLs at the very top, and you might have been thinking, okay, that's great, it's fast, you know, you say it's fast, we can add it in, but that might be a little cumbersome to edit. You know, it's when it gets really long and you have maybe 1,000 or 10,000 URLs or however many you have, uh, that might be a little difficult. And we actually thought the same thing. And this is one of the reasons why we actually launched Cloudflare Workers KV. And Cloudflare Workers KV is a distributed, eventually consistent key value store that caches keys and values in every Cloudflare data center to be instantly accessible wherever they're needed. So now you actually no longer need to store all of the routes in code and redeploy your application in order to change routing behavior, we can actually just attach workers KV namespace. Up here you can see I have image map right there in all caps. We can attach that and we can easily read and write from either the worker or anywhere else. So you can do this. So now with a simple API call, you can actually change the routing of your entire application. You don't need to redeploy anything. You don't need to do anything else. You can just do it with a very simple API call. So that's the first example. It's the uh, routing. But next up, we actually have, what if you didn't actually want to copy everything over at once, but you actually were like, let's take a second and let's only copy over the things that we need. What if we could just do that? So let's say you still have the same few hundred thousand or maybe a million images, uh, but you're, yet again, you're not actually sure which files are getting used since they're, you know, you might have tons of test files from, you know, old campaigns that have been run or things like that. You might have like the, if you're an online store, you might have like, you know, holiday season 2014, all the banner images or something like that. But you're not totally sure where everything is being used. And so the thing you do know is, is that whatever is being used, of course, you want to migrate into S3. You want to bring that over. And the question becomes is, how do you actually make sure you only copy over the needed files without actually going in and, you know, maybe you don't have the logs, maybe it's just a, you know, difficult thing going through and digging through and seeing, oh, this is an image that's being used, this is something that's being used. And you know, how do you actually go about doing this without kind of all of that work? And this is where Cloudflare Worker's ability to act as an intelligent bridge while working with Cloudflare's underlying caching and smart routing capabilities comes into play. So this is a rather involved example, and it's a bit long for a slide. Uh, so I'm just going to use some pseudocode here and hit a little bit of the highlights. If you'd like to get better detail, we have on our blog at blog.cloudflare.com, we have a serverless section. So you can see this as well as a lot of our customer use cases. You can go check that out as well as the developer portal at developers.cloudflare.com. But back to this example is 
for this example, we're actually going to, we're actually just inside the handler function that I mentioned before. And from the top, what you're actually going to, what you're going to see is we're, we're checking to see if this image has actually been cached before. So if it's already in S3, we don't need to do anything. We might as well just go fetch from S3 the URL that we needed, and we can move on. After that, though, if we're not in S3, what we're doing here is we're actually taking the, we're going to go fetch the image body, and then we're going to take the response of the image that we get, and we're going to do a handful of things here, including hash it and other things, and we're going to put it to this nice little, I mocked out the little generate AWS signature function to actually end up we're going to create a put request for putting things into, for putting this image into S3. So next thing we do is we call out to S3, we put the image, and then we return to the user. So now what's actually happened is when somebody has made a request for an image, let's say they did go to holiday 2014 there, it's some old campaign that you can still access, they did it, it would actually be copied over only if they did that. And if it's 2013 or 2015 or whatever, you don't have to worry about uh, that being copied over and you using or wasting space on things that you don't need. So something to note is that while laying it out in this fashion makes it easy to fit on one slide, to do this for real, you should actually return the image first, right? You want the response to be really fast for your user. You can return the image first, and then you can actually do all of the, you can put into S3 behind the scenes at the same time and then write to the key value store to say, hey, this has been put in S3. Now, one last thing I'd like to leave you with in terms of maybe hopefully sparking an idea of the true possibilities of what you can do with Cloudflare workers in between acting as this layer in between, you know, maybe on-prem and AWS or any, anything else is the, our support for WebAssembly and the ability to do custom transformations and other things on Cloudflare. So we recently announced support for WebAssembly, which means that you can now write C, C++, Rust, Go, or anything else that compiles to WebAssembly and run it inside of a worker. And what that's really useful for is doing things like heavy lifting. And in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be resizing images on the fly to create thumbnails only as they're requested. Now, when we announced WebAssembly support, the engineer who built it, his name is Kenton, he also created a great blog and some example on GitHub on how to do quick image resizing. And I'm going to take you just to, through a bit of it here just to give you the gist. Now, the code here is also split into two major parts. Here at the beginning of the file, you can see that we have, uh, I'm initializing the WebAssembly instance. So we're going to import a C library that does image manipulation. We're going to set up the resizer. We're going to set up all of the memory that it's needed because we're, we'll be using this memory in just a second to communicate with the, with the resizer function. And then, this second section here would actually go just after where we pulled the, we fetched the image from your original origin, just after where we did that before. Except now what we're going to do is instead of just returning that, hashing that data, putting it into S3 and returning it to the user, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to pass it into the resizer function. So we pass it in, we use the shared memory, then we call our WebAssembly's model, res uh, WebAssembly modules resize function to do the resize, and then we pull it out, and then we can do everything else that we need with this again. And so you can imagine what this actually lets you do is, you know, if you get, uh, you have, let's say you have master images stored in one location, and you only want to take it as, you know, as they're needed, images as they're needed, and you only want to resize them as they're needed, you can then take the master image, if it's requested from, say, a device with an extremely small screen, you can then do a resize on it, put that into S3, only that into S3, and then continue to do that only as it's needed without having to pay for, you know, having to generate millions of images and kind of store them all at once. So you can ha kind of do things on the fly here. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the talk and learned a little bit more about how Cloudflare workers can be used to help you migrate uh, various portions of your application to the cloud at your own pace, right? So no need to build anything greenfield. You don't have to go out and, you know, be like, okay, so for our next application, you know, we have to do this or we're going to redo our application. So let's spend eight months re-architecting it in a serverless, serverless way, right? You don't need to do that. You can get some of those benefits without actually having to, without actually having to kind of take all of that time and do that. So you can kind of start and make the journey a little bit easier. And if you're interested in more detail or code samples covering what we discussed today, please check out the developer portal at uh, developers.cloudflare.com or the blog at blog.cloudflare.com. I'm also happy to talk after the session, any questions you might have on things that you might like to do. And I'll also be over in Cloudflare booth 2001 for the rest of the week. So feel free to come chat with me there. Or you can also email me or reach me on Twitter. And that's it.
So thank you very much. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you, Remy.